Hello, everyone. Hope you've had an amazing time at ANU and enjoyed seeing our beautiful campus today. Um, I'm Priya, and I'm a master's student at ANU. I'm doing my um, master's in quantitative biology and bioinformatics. Uh, the next session will be presented to you by um, Professor Kieran Kirk, who is the Dean of the ANU College of Science. And he's going to tell us more about why he studies science at ANU, which I'm keen on knowing as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you all very much for coming. So for the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to talk about science uh, at the ANU and the sort of things we offer to those people who are interested in coming to study science at the ANU. I'll talk a bit about the different degree structures. I'll talk about the different degrees we offer, uh, tell you a little bit about what they look like. And then towards the end, I'll tell you a little bit about the, the, what we think are the, the, uh, the notable and unusual features about studying science at the ANU. So I'm Kieran Kirk. I'm the Dean of Science here, which means I have broad responsibility for all the different science disciplines that we do teaching and research in here at the Australian National University. And just to give you a bit of an overview, this goes through astronomy and astrophysics. And of course, our Vice Chancellor, Brian Schmidt, is a famous astrophysicist who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2011 in this field. We cover biology, we cover chemistry, we cover earth and marine sciences, environment and sustainability, mathematics, medical science, physics, and science communication. All of these disciplines are areas in which we do teaching and research, which you can come and study here at the university. So a little bit about the undergraduate science programs here at the ANU. In terms of the science degrees, we offer a number of different science degrees. The Bachelor of Science is our fundamental degree. It's a three-year degree. It gives you enormous breadth of subject choice. And many people come into a science degree not really knowing what they're interested in, other than in a broad interest in science. And typically, as you go through, you refine, you discover things you're interested in. And the Bachelor of Science allows you to carve your own path there. We have a degree called the Bachelor of Science Advanced, which has an honors component built in. And I'll come a little bit later to what that means. This is a four-year degree because of that honors component. If you come into the university in this degree, you are guaranteed uh, a place in the honors program. So you have guaranteed honors entry. And then as you go through as an undergraduate in your first three years, before you get into the honors program, you have particular opportunities available to you, what we call honors pathway options in some of the courses that you're studying in first year, second year, and third year. And then we have a degree called the Bachelor of Philosophy. And the Bachelor of Philosophy is a highly selected degree. It guarantees you honours entry, similar to the Bachelor of Science Advanced. It's a specifically research-intensive degree. And the PhD is for people who come in knowing that they are interested in research. And part of the experience that they get as they go through the first three years is they actually get involved in the research that we're doing here at the university. Each Bachelor of Philosophy student is assigned an academic mentor. Are we filming this? Terrific. Each Bachelor of Philosophy student is assigned an academic mentor, and they interact as they go through their degree, and the student is given an opportunity to work in the science research groups with the science researchers as they go through. So it's a very particular sort of degree for people who have a specific interest in research. So in terms of the general degree structure, this is what the structure looks like. If you come in and do a science degree at the ANU, whoop, sorry. Wrong button, there. Each year, so the basic degree structure has three years, first year, second year, and third year. And in each of these three years, first, second, and third year, you will do, in first semester, you'll do four courses, and in second semester, you'll do four courses. So that's eight courses. Each of the courses we assign six units to, so that by the time you finish first year and you've completed eight courses, four in each semester, you'll have accumulated 48 units, another 48 units in second year, another 48 units in third year, which means by the time you finish these three years, you will have 144 units, you will have completed 24 courses, and if you want to, you have the option of graduating there. And then that's typically what a Bachelor of Science student might do, three years, and then to graduation. If you're interested in doing a different sort of year, at the end of those three years, as a fourth year, and I'll talk a little bit about what this, on, this honours year entails, you do an honours year, 
gives you a fourth year, gives you different sorts of experiences, and many of our students graduate with an honours degree. And those with an honours degree typically go out into the workforce, or if you are interested in doing a PhD, then typically that's what you do before you then embark on a PhD, either here or elsewhere, and, and a significant number of our students do that. In terms of prerequisites before you come into a science degree, and as you go through the science degree, many of the second-year courses have first-year courses as prerequisites, and many of the third-year courses have second-year courses as prerequisites, which means to do a certain subject in second year, you have to have done a particular subject that prepares you for it in first year, and the same goes for third year as well. And the general philosophy in the science degrees is that first year is very broad, second year starts to focus and get more specialised in particular areas, and third year is more specialised, and that's where you really narrow in on the particular fields of science that you're interested in. And so you have to keep an eye on the prerequisites, if you have particular things in mind just for second and third year, you need to make certain choices in first year, but just so that doesn't seem too daunting, just to let you know that we provide you with plenty of help with that. So you'll have the opportunity to speak to people who will ask you about your interests, where do you think you might like to go, and if you might like to go in this direction, it's probably a good idea to do this course in first year so that you could have this range of courses in second year and these courses in third year. Back to the Bachelor of Science, the fundamental science degree. The science degree is flexible. Two-thirds of the courses have to be from science, and up to one-third of the courses can be from any other part of the university. So if you know you're interested in science, but you don't want to give up other things that you're interested in, this is a good degree for that, because you can choose things from all over the university. As you go through the science component of your degree, you do what we call majors. So students choose at least one major plus a minor, and I'll explain what that means in a minute, or some students choose two majors. For those who choose to do so, there's the honours year, there's the fourth year, students can progress to honours from this program, and you decide this in third year, if you're in the Bachelor of Science degree. And the Bachelor of Science degree, then, who is it for? It's for students who want a range and breadth of subject areas to choose from, including subject areas from outside science. So it's a very broad degree for people with a broad range of interests. So I referred to majors and minors as you go through. As you go through a science degree, you do specialise in particular areas. For example, you might specialise to some extent in biology, you might specialise to some extent in chemistry. These are the sorts of uh, titles for the majors. A major consists of eight courses, or 48 units, and there's a very broad range of courses within each of the majors. So as you go through the science degree, you might have a major in biology, for example, and a major or a minor in chemistry. A minor consists of four courses, and minors can be more specific, so whereas the majors have titles like biology or chemistry, minors have titles like biological neuropsychology. They're more specialised, and you have combinations of courses that relate specifically to those more specialised disciplines. And then we also refer to specialisations, which are effectively minors, done at the higher level, made up primarily of third-year courses. So the general theme, and I alluded to this before, is you start very broad, you develop interests, you become interested in particular areas, you have the opportunity to do courses that are more specialised, and you package these together into majors, majors and minors, and then by meet the requirements of the degree. So there are other science degrees, as well as the Bachelor of Science, which I've been talking about. There are other three-year degrees that are somewhat more specialised, there's a Bachelor of Science Psychology, which is a three-year degree. There's a Bachelor of Medical Science, again, three years. A Bachelor of Health Sciences, a Bachelor of Biotechnology, a Bachelor of Genetics, a Bachelor of Environment and Sustainability, a Bachelor of Mathematical Sciences. So these are all three-year degrees. They don't offer the same breadth that the basic Bachelor of Science does, but if you're coming to university knowing that you have particular interests in one or other of these particular disciplines, this may be appropriate for you, to choose something that gives you more specialisation from early on. In terms of prerequisites, as you think of coming to the university, there are no general prerequisites for a Bachelor of Science. Note, however, that if you're coming to the Bachelor of Science and you want to do chemistry, chemistry does require that you have Year 12 chemistry, or if you don't have Year 12 chemistry, and I know that some of you will be sitting here thinking that you might want to come in and you might want to do chemistry, for reasons I'll come to, that's fine. 
because in the chemistry school, we do offer what we call a bridging course. So the summer prior to first year, if you haven't done chemistry, you have the opportunity to come and learn the fundamentals of chemistry that then allows you, in the same way that year 12 chemistry allows you, to go into first year chemistry at the university. And the reason why first year chemistry is important is that first year chemistry is a prerequisite for second year chemistry and third year chemistry, but it is also a prerequisite for some of the later year biology courses. So if you come in thinking you want to do biology and you haven't got chemistry, you might then want to do the bridging course so that you can do first year chemistry because first year chemistry is required for some of the later biology courses. There are prerequisites as well for mathematics, and if you're doing physics, again, you will need to have done some mathematics along the way. So some subjects do have prerequisites, and again, we will give you plenty of advice on that. Some programs, that's degrees, have prerequisites, as first year chemistry is a required subject. So if you're coming into the Bachelor of Medical Science, the Bachelor of Health Sciences, the Bachelor of Biotechnology, or the Bachelor of Genetics, you have to do first year chemistry as part of those more specialized degrees, and again, that means you either need to have done Year 12 chemistry or you need to have come to the ANU over summer and done that bridging course so that you can go then into first year chemistry and meet the requirements for these different degree programs. So I talked, I made mention of the fact that you can do an honours year. I've talked so far about three year degrees, and at the end of three years, you can graduate and go into the workforce, but you may be interested in doing an honours year. And that's a different sort of year. It's a one year program. In some areas of the science college, it involves 50% coursework in other, and 50% and research. In other areas, it, it involves almost entirely research. So this is, whether you're doing it in maths or physics, or whether you're doing it in biology, it's your introduction to being a researcher. You have your own research project, you work closely with a supervisor, typically within a research group, and you are working on a very particular project, you're carrying out experiments, or you're carrying out field work, or you're doing the relevant mathematics. You're at the cutting edge of research, you're writing a thesis on the basis of that. As you go through, you're doing the sorts of things that researchers do, you're interacting with other researchers, you're giving oral presentations, you're giving written presentations. You're not sitting in the research component, you're not doing the same level of coursework, you're not doing exams, it's teaching you an entirely different set of skills, and it's, an, uh, it's a year that many of our students take advantage of. You learn how to do independent research, you learn about time management, you learn about critical thinking, and again, the honours year is a very particular experience that many of our students take advantage of. If you're going to do a PhD, you need to have done an honours year, and with the honours year behind you, with these sort of skills behind you, that makes you eligible for a wider range of job opportunities. So this is the fourth year. You don't have to do it as part of the three-year degrees that I've been talking about so far. You do do it as part of several of the other degrees that I mentioned. And I mentioned the Bachelor of Philosophy, where you actually start doing research in the first three years, and then you go on and do this fourth honours year. In the Bachelor of Science Advanced, again, to graduate with this, you need to do this fourth honours year, this research-based year. In the Bachelor of Psychology, the same. And in the Bachelor of Environment and Sustainability Advanced, again, Built into these degrees is this fourth year, this year where we focus on teaching you research skills and all the associated skills associated with that. So let me say a little bit about this Bachelor of Philosophy, this research-focused degree. It's the most highly selected degree at the university. As I said, it introduces you to doing research from first year. You're assigned an individual academic mentor who advises you as you go through the years of your degree, who helps you find placements in research groups, working with researchers, helps you find projects. It's extremely flexible. As part of the PhD, you do a lot of science, but you can go off anywhere else on campus and pick up other courses, so it gives you a lot of flexibility. You need to do the honours year, so it's always a four-year degree. And for a, particular, for a particular number, a particular quota of students in that PhD degree, there is a pathway into the postgraduate medical course here at the university. And certainly we can provide you with advice on that if that's a route you would like to take. There are also what we call flexible double degrees. You can combine your science degree, and this is a particular feature of degrees at the ANU. Many people do combine their science degrees with a second degree, and typically, you can do that with an arts degree, you can do it with a social sciences degree, you can do it with a business degree, which means you, as you go through, you're taking courses from different colleges, 
And if you're doing a science arts degree or a science social sciences degree or science business, it'll take you four years. If you're combining science and engineering or science and advanced computing, it'll take you five years. And if you want to do a science law degree, combining science and law, again, that will take you five years. So this is a particular thing that, that a significant number of our students do. They combine degrees and thereby graduate with this broad set of skills and experiences. Just to touch on the fact that once you've done your undergraduate degree, there are many opportunities for doing master's degrees. Most of our discipline areas offer master's degrees. These typically take two years after you've done the basic bachelor degree of the sort I've talked about. You can do an advanced master's, and the feature of the advanced master's is that you have a research project and research training built in. So again, it's got this research component that you can otherwise do as an honours year in the way that I've talked about. So that's it in terms of the degree structures, about what degrees we offer and what they look like and what you need to think about in terms of prerequisites, both beforehand and as you go through the degrees. But I'm just before I finish, I just want to talk a little bit about why we think studying science at the ANU is, is, is special, how we, the things that we pride ourselves on here uh, in science at the university. So one of the features that we have is that we've recently built a lot of new buildings and we have dedicated teaching buildings that are specifically for teaching and have state-of-the-art teaching facilities. And here, for example, is a modern lecture theatre. It's just a few years old. You can see that people no longer sit in rows in this particular theatre. They sit around tables. They have a computer in the middle. It's not the traditional person at the front talking to rows of students. There's a lot of interaction in terms of... And the teaching spaces that we have allow us to provide this sort of teaching opportunity. And there again is another one of those rooms where the students are interacting as they learn. And that's a, something that we have in place. We also have a state-of-the-art and, again, very new uh, building for practical classes. So as I'll talk about in a minute, for anyone doing chemistry or biology or physics or earth sciences or other subjects, we have a substantial practical class component, and we have really good facilities in which to do that. And that's a very full class of first-year biology students doing a molecular biology practical. We also do a lot of field trips. So the students who come here, particularly those who are interested in biology, or the environment, or earth sciences, or marine sciences, will find, as part of their undergraduate degree, they will find multiple opportunities to go on field trips. And a field trip involves going away for up to a week. We send trips down to the coast. We send trips up to the mountains. We subsidize these trips. They're very educational, and they're a lot of fun. And certainly, this is something that we really value. In terms of the sciences, both the practical classes and the fieldwork classes, we we, we promote those as a real feature of our, of our degrees. More and more, univer the, these sorts of experiences are, are complicated to put on, they're expensive, but we put them on because fundamentally we believe a good science training involves actual hands-on work, either in a laboratory or in the field. So when you finish a science degree here, you will have these sorts of experiences to look back on, these sorts of experiences to draw on as you go on to whatever happens next. So in terms of the distinctiveness of the undergraduate experience, certainly we ha have a lot of award-winning teachers. One of the features of the teachers at the ANU is that because, as I've talked about, there's a lot of research going on, all the teachers that you have at the university, all the lecturers that you have are themselves active researchers. And they draw on that research in presenting, preparing and presenting their classes, and you have the opportunity as a student to get involved in that research if you'd like to. The teachers are very good. You have international opportunities. As an ANU student, we offer you the opportunity to go and study abroad for six months, for a semester. We offer many opportunities to go and do field work overseas. It's one, again, one of the distinctive features of the university that students coming through, we hope, will all have at least one international experience, and in many cases, more than one. We have relatively small class sizes here at the ANU. The total student body at the ANU is not very large compared to the bigger big city universities, which means that the class sizes are relatively small. The student-staff ratio is relatively small. And we also specialise, as you go through and you look at the different courses that are available to you, we ensure that whilst there are strong courses in each of the individual disciplines, we also have a suite of interdisciplinary approaches or interdisciplinary classes that recognise that in the modern world you need, in some senses, to, to bring together, to draw on multiple disciplines in, in approaching particular problems. So we have what's called the Vice-Chancellor's courses, and 
That doesn't show up very well, but for these are the titles of some of the vice chancellor's courses. Leadership and influence in a complex world, creating knowledge, unraveling complexity, mobilizing research. And these courses are characterized, if you sit in one of these courses as a student, you will see lecturers coming in from all over campus and talking about interdisciplinary approaches to complex issues. And that, again, is an unusual feature of what we do here. I talked about the fact that all of the teachers that you have in front of you are active researchers. Research underpins everything we do. And as a student, you uh, come to realize that very early on as the lecturers talk about the sorts of research they've seen published, the latest breakthroughs in the particular area that you might be studying. And as well as that, as a student, you feel part of a community in which the students and staff are constantly making new discoveries. So some of the undergraduates are actually involved in the research. The honor students are certainly involved in the research. That's the main focus there, their honors year, and the PhD students. And it is a single community. So whether or not you have any interest in research, you will soon appreciate that the stuff you're learning is stuff that is ahead of the textbooks. You're learning stuff that has been recently discovered by people here or by people working internationally. And it is therefore, and it is through that, that we ensure that it really is a state-of-the-art curriculum. The Honours Pathway programs are for students who want to extend a subject further. This allows The Honours Pathway programs allow students to get engaged in research as they go through. And as I've talked about, the PhD program and the direct honours entry degrees for high-achieving students provide research experiences for a very early part of the degree. When you find yourself a student here at the ANU, you have a lot of support from the teaching staff, and you also have support from your fellow students. And we formalise this in what we call the Peer Assisted Learning Programme. In first year, we have students from later years coming together and helping the students from the earlier years. And we also... Um, have in each of the different schools, we have what we call drop-in centres. This is the biology drop-in centres, where the students come in, whether in first, second or third year, you can come here, grab a coffee, meet other students in first, second and third year, whether it's in the context of this slightly formal peer-assisted learning or just meeting other students. So if you're a biology student in first year, you will come to meet the second-year biology students and the third-year biology students, and we thereby try to build communities in each of the different areas in which the students might be studying. And in terms of the honours year, again, we have a suite of new buildings. There's the chemistry building, this is the biology building, and we have state-of-the-art research laboratories. So if you're a fourth-year student at the ANU doing honours, you are working in a state-of-the-art laboratory or doing field work um, using state-of-the-art equipment, and we ensure that the people who are doing research, the students who are doing research, are right at the cutting edge and have the experience of working with second-to-none facilities. So that's all I wanted to say in terms of the science degree. It is a, we have a suite of degrees. We're proud of all of them, whether they are the ones where you want a lot of breadth or ones where you have more focus and you come in with a, clear, a clearer idea. For all of the degrees, they have things in common. They all have relatively small class sizes. You're always taught by active researchers. Whether you're doing practical-based studies or fieldwork studies, you'll see a lot of that. That will be a strong part of your experience and I hope you'll have a good time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Thanks for fascinating the young scientific minds present in this room with all the wonderful options that ANU does offer. Um, the next session will be on soon, and if you want to be present for the next session, please remain seated. Other than that, um, the exits are to my left, and you could proceed likewise. Thank you so much.